Picture this. It's 10 p.m. on a Saturday night. The casino closes at 1 a.m. Even if math wasn't your strong suit in school, you should be able to deduct that we only have three hours to dust off our bankroll. Let's see how much damage we can inflict to our pockets within such a short time span. We get seated at 1-2 for a few minutes, but quickly get moved over to the must-move 2-5 game. The awkward thing is I'm coming from 1-2, so I only have around 250 in front of me, which equates to 25 big blinds. My stack depth going into this hand is shorter than Kevin Hart, but let's see how it plays out. We're in the cutoff, and we look down at two suited cards, which means I'm putting money in the middle. There's a straddle on, and the hijack limps. I raised it up to $30. Apparently no one saw me look at my cards, because they thought I did this blind. And four people call. We're going five ways to a flop, which comes rather favorable for our holding. Eight five deuce with two spades. Action checks to me, and I think you know where this is going. How many people are in here? Five? Five. 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 All in. <laughs> nah, I didn't look. That was blind for sure. You can call me though and realize that I have no equity. It's a double up for you, sir. Just put the money in the middle. Funny enough, everyone folds, and now we have a great YouTube title. <laughs> He just filmed us. He just, he just. Yeah, no, we're gonna end up on a vlog. Yeah, we're He's like, look at these wimpy players. Yeah, sublime. <laughs> <so, laughs> so these guys are so tight. <laughs> All right, two minutes into the session, and everyone thinks I'm a madman. Let's make use of that table image as the same orbit. We pick up pocket tens in the straddle. There are two limps, and the button raises to fifty-five dollars. Since I'm out of position, I 3-bet on the larger size to $205, and only the button calls. So we're going heads up to a flop, which comes absolutely outstanding for pocket 10s. Flop comes ace, king, queen, so meet me out back and shoot me in the foot. This board favors my range heavily though, so if by any chance the button called my 3-bet with any lower pair or suited connectors, I'm going to fire one street as I would with all of my strong holdings, I throw six green chips into the middle, and I don't think I'm ever getting them back because the button calls. Turn is an irrelevant six. Now I only have around 600 behind. I don't want to put any more money into this pot. Yes, this flop favors me as the three better, but our image is not great, so I just decide to slow down and check. Button decides to check it back. The river comes. The Jack of Diamonds! We make a straight on our second hand of the night. No, I'm kidding. It was a brick. So we check it, and the button checks it back. He had ace nine, so he takes them the pot. Nice hand, sir. We're down like 400 to start the session. <laughs> the literal next hand, we pick up pocket threes in the big blind. There are three limps. I decide to limp, and the straddler raises it up to $65. Well, if I hit a set, I think I'll be able to get paid. So I decide to pay $50 more to see a flop. The flop comes everything, not a three. I check it to the preflop raiser. He puts more chips in the middle. I do not. We've played three of the first four hands were dealt. We are down $400. There's no doubt everyone at this table thinks I'm a beached whale. You can't make this up. Two hands later, we're on the button, and we look down at another pocket pair. At this point, everyone grabbed the harpoon and aimed it directly at my seat because they're trying to extract this whale for as much value as possible. Anyways, Hijack makes it $40. I'm in there. I make the call. The big blind decides to 3-bet to $115. Yikes. Folds back to the Hijack, who decides to make the call. Now we're in a similar situation as last hand. It's $65 more to see a flop. I think for sure I could double up, maybe even triple up, if I hit a set here. Unfortunately though, we only have around 500 behind. I don't know. We have a pair. It's straightforward post-flop. Folding is boring. This whale continues to flop around in the sand. Take my money, boys. We're going to a flop with over $450 in the middle, and look at the window card. I'm happier than a Disney princess dancing through the prairie right now. It seems the plan of tripling up might actually come to fruition, because the big blind continues for $155, and then the hijack jams all in for $700 plus dollars. I should become an actor because I put on my best Hollywood impression. Oh, dude, I have no idea what I'm going to do here. This is such a tough spot. Oh my gosh. Let me weigh out my options for like 50. I'm all in. 
The big blind looks perplexed and clearly has no idea what to do. It seems the big blind might actually have ace queen, kings, or aces here because he goes into the tank as well for about a minute. Could we possibly go three ways all in for the potential to triple up? The big blind contemplates his options and begrudgingly ends up folding. Let's go heads up to a run out. The turn looks clean. Okay, and the river? Shit. That can't be good. Yeah, no, it's certainly not good because the hijack shows ace 10 of clubs for the river nut flush. Five cards of the same suit certainly beats what I'm holding, so I violently throw my cards at the dealer and aggressively push my chips toward the middle. If I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna do it like a baby. Don't take losing with Charlie, that's not professional. And just like that, we're felted within 10 minutes. We lost a cool K. Well, I played for legitimately under 10 minutes and I just lost a thousand, so that's a fun day. I don't have enough for a rebuy on me. Now I'm going to head home, grab some more money and come back. And hopefully I'm still at the table. I think I have 30 minutes, so. <laughs> what a start, dude, what a start. That's great. And by great, I mean I am one flip away from killing myself. We drive all the way home, pick up a few thousand dollars, make sure we have enough for a few rebuys, just in case. Things are already south, but just in case they go more south, we have backup and reinforcements this time. What a dream table. I can't believe that. I mean, I think I played all right. And talk about a great image. I want to go back there immediately. They all think I'm Rampunce Jr. Hello? Yes, this is Corey from Rebuy Station here at 107.5. How can I help you today? Oh, yes. You need to stop punting your poker chips to nits to the table? Yes, absolutely. We can help you with that. Psych, no we can't. Here's a f***ing rebuy. Let's try again. All right, since that went so well, we dig into our pockets for another $1,000. We're on to bullet number two. Let's try not to torch this one. We're back in action, and we pick up seven six-suited in the cutoff. The straddle's on, and there's a limper to me. I reached up to $35, and only the button and the limper call. Flop comes queen, ten, four, two hearts, and a diamond. We flop absolutely nothing but a dream, but in life, all you need is a strong will, right? Limper checks to me, and I throw out a continuation bet of $50. Only the button calls, so we eliminate one player from the field, just gotta get one more to fold. The turn comes a great card, in the queen of diamonds. This is a great card for multiple reasons. First and foremost, it's a diamond, so we pick up additional equity, and it also lessens the probability that my opponent's holding a queen, and increases the probability that he's on some sort of draw, like king-jack, or hearts, or maybe he's just holding a 10, or some weaker to middling pair. With all of those holdings, they're gonna have a very tough time facing a larger bet, so that's what I do. I continue putting the pressure on, I fire for $160. The button doesn't think too long before letting his cards go. We get this one through and pick up a pot moving in the right direction. Next, we pick up royalty and turmoil in the form of ace-king offsuit. Button opens to $35. Since I'm out of position, I go 4x to 140. And the button doesn't think that's enough money. He's not concerned in the slightest as he 4-bets to $375. Wow. That is a large sizing. However, his body language doesn't look like a guy who's happy that he just 4-bet for $375. The more I think about this, the less his sizing makes sense. I had $1,100 to start the hand, and the button covers me. So I have $960 behind facing this bet. With our stack depths, if I just call, the pot will be north of $750. Which means, regardless of the flop, it's probably getting all in anyways. So pre-flop, my only realistic options are to jam or fold. Now what hands is he actually 4-betting here? If he has 10s, jacks, or queens, wouldn't he just call? Because he's in position, and with a 4-bet to this sizing, he only leaves me two options. And unless he's comfortable jamming $1,000 in a case where he's flipping at best and could be easily dominated, I just don't think he's 4-betting those hands. So that leaves aces or kings, which we have blockers to both. But if he happens to have aces or kings, great for him. I don't think I'm ever folding this. I'm down $900. I have a pretty hand. I have to jam or fold. 
with everything that's been said, I think you know which direction I'm leaning in. Owen. Where's Owen? I'm interested. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's gonna be... He lets his cards go faster than I finish in the bedroom, which is saying a lot. Glad we picked up $375, a big step in the right direction towards breaking even for this session. Our stack is up to around $1,400, so we're only down $500 on the day. Let's see if we can continue to head in the right direction. Next interesting spot, we have Ace-Queen Offsuit on the button. I raised it up to $35, and the Straddler has this to say. Just like last hand, I have two pretty cards, and I'm stuck on the day. One plus two equals three. I'm jamming. I hope the math checks out in everyone else's head, not just mine. I mean, at the very least, it's good content. Let's do it. <laughs> the straddler exposes an ace. I expose an ace. Oh, it's a chop. What are you thinking? It's your bud. That's a good flop. What a queen. When he says this, in my head, I'm thinking, oh. Maybe we actually are just chopping. One, two, three, go. I got a boost. Mother fucker. Of course you do. It's times like this that make me want to buy a Rosetta Stone subscription just so I can learn to swear in 36 different languages. We were a 71 to 23% favorite going into this flop. He had a 6.8% chance on the turn, and by the glory of God, he pulled it out. So, we get our world shattered. Nice hand, sir. I stand corrected. He actually had a 16% chance, which is around the same percentage that the nut flush dude had on the turn. It's safe to say that statistical improbabilities are giving me a nut check right now, and I can't say it feels that good. In the very next hand, we have Ace-3 of Diamonds in the cutoff. I raised it up to $25, and the big blind calls, which is the same opponent from last hand. Flop comes innocent enough, deuce, deuce, three. He checks, I bet $20, and he calls. The turn is the seven, and he checks it over to me once again. I don't think we're getting value from worse, so I just check it back. The river is another seven. Now the big blind leads out for $25. Okay, I can't fold. I flick in a chip, and the big blind shows pocket fives. We get our world wrecked two hands in a row. I need to find a new profession. In this last hand of the night, we have queen ten of diamonds in the cutoff. I make it $25, four call, and the flop comes seven three deuce. I can't get rid of my cards fast enough. Three people ended up getting it all in. I don't even know the action. I don't care. All I know is that we minimized their loss to $25. We only lost $25 with queen high. That's some goat level fold right there. You should subscribe and leave a like for that one. Best play of the night. The casino closed down shortly after this. Time to rack up and cash out. We were in the game for $1,900, out for less than that for an overall loss of X amount of dollars, which will be right here. I think it was like around 800, 900, eight something. I think I actually played okay. I got in several spots where I was favorable, set over nut flush hand, and then the ace queen versus ace deuce. Those are just variants. So I would want that situation every time. And pre-flop against ace nine, tens are like a 60 something percent favorite. So. Just didn't run great today, but overall, I think I got myself in favorable situations. Cars just didn't come, but that's what you want. That's poker. That's all I got for you. I've got another episode coming on Monday. So if you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. More coming soon. Till next time. Peace.